Hi, everybody. I wanted to jump on and do a question and answer in my spare time between clients. I try to do this uh, at least once a month because of the emails and the questions that I get. And instead of, um, you know, emailing 100 people back, I thought, you know what, if you've got this question, other people have this question. Since we've been diving into a little bit more deep, deeper t uh, teachings this year, as far as the root the root of, of our disbelief, the root of our self-concept, the root of our dominant assumption, which is basically how you are creating your entire world out of what you believe and secretly uh, believe about yourself, even if you don't want to believe it. So the questions that I'm going to answer today are all based on this these ideas. Uh, realistically, if you've been following me for hundred years, you know that I always teach the premise that you are in a virtual reality simulation. Your experience is holographic, which therefore you are holographic in nature. And that's good news because everything is malleable and changeable, fixable, and you can jump from different templates, just like in a video game. You can create different timelines based on your imagination, your focus, your belief system, and that together creates your self-concept. Neville Goddard talks a lot about the self-concept um, and, and he's really pro affirmations in that relaxed state. Now, what we're dealing with is a lot more uh, realization and awareness that maybe that was available 100 years ago when he was teaching this. And there's a, so many great teachers out there have taken his work and really elaborated and created good teachings and metaphors around how to take this idea that I am God in imagination of myself into, okay, how and and when and, and all those wonderful details. So the first question that I have is awesome. It was, it was like, I want to start with this one because it's so cool. You guys are about to just empower your whole world when you hear this answer. Someone asked me, um, if this is a holographic universe and I am just an actor in virtual reality imagining myself, are the people, places, and things in my, what appears circumstantial, stagnant reality, do they have free will when it comes to me as creator? Okay. And the answer is no. No one has free will in your simulation. Now, everybody has their simulation. Everyone has their universe. Everyone has their self-concept, which means that although we might be overlapping with each other in different time space continuums, in your particular holographic space, there is not one person who has free will over you as a creator. And you're going, how's that possible? They're mean to me. They steal from me. They scam me. They hurt me. They break my heart. They use me. How, how am I, how am I creating that? How are they not doing that to me? You have to understand that your your self-concept is so much more than what you see in the mirror and where you put your clothes on and the age of your body and your initial backstory. You are a spectrum. You are a spectrum. There is a very high level consciousness within you. And then there is a very low, 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 primitive, unevolved part of your consciousness that that has been traumatized, that has been hurt, that has been disconnected from source, that has been um, you know, basically broken into fractal pieces where it's stuck in suffering. And the parts of you that are stuck in suffering are what is creating the holographic experience inside of you. So imagine this real quickly. You're a child at the deepest, 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 deepest hurt. My dogs are eating. Savages. Deepest part of you that is hurting is sending in an SOS out of you saying, I'm hurting, I'm feeling devalued, I'm feeling unworthy, I'm feeling alone, I'm feeling stuck, I'm feeling blocked, I'm feeling trapped, I'm feeling starving. And it projects out of you into the reflection of what you see in people, places, and things around you. So when someone devalues you, it is you SOSing the mirror and reflecting back to you a part of you that feels devalued. Now notice how the triggers of these these things, the echoes, the 
the flashbacks, the, the patterns really start to show up when you start to become worthy because the part of you that is standing in their worth and standing in their power and focusing and imagination and, and doing all of this great co self-concept work is uprooting and resurrecting some of these deeply wounded, lost pieces of yourself. And they, in order to get your attention, because you have abandoned and rejected them for so long, they will project and then reflect back to you into your special person, into your family, into your money, into your work, into your body. And you are feeling like a victim of circumstances. You feel like you need to defend and protect yourself. You feel like you need to run away from them or, or call them more or text them more or wish that they would call. And ultimately what they are reflecting back to you is your root wound that is mixed in with your self-concept, whether you are aware of it or not. Okay, I had a serious pattern in relationships for years and years and years, no matter how successful I got and good shape I got and, you know, educated I got, I always ended up feeling devalued in relationship, used, passed over, not chosen, um, ignored, um, you know, cheated on, like, or, or just sometimes I felt like I was too good for them, you know, in certain areas, because again, your wound can project into your behavior through feeling like a victim or feeling like a perpetrator, like get away from me. Your job is to read the trigger as an SOS from that lost part of yourself, decode it, hear it, see it, feel it, love it, create safety for it, heal it, embody it so that it will stop basically haunting you and ghosting you through the possession and channeling through other people. OK, so that guy who's not calling you back, he does not have free will. He doesn't know why he's calling you back. He's in your movie. Why is his script saying don't call her back? Your his script is saying don't call her back because you have a belief system that when you open your heart to someone, you get, you know, abandoned or rejected. You have a belief system that when you are being vulnerable, you are left on read. So you are the one who is scripting the people, places and things. It has always been that way. It will always be that way. And you're saying, do they not have free will? They're not their own person. This is unity consciousness. So in unity consciousness, there is one being that is physically focused, having a unique experience. And we were all part of that game. So right now, I am part of your virtual reality, telling you this from the beyond, saying, guys, everything, including me, including them, including the ghost, inclu including the the scammer, including the, the mean mother, including the backstory is all part of you unfolding. And part of your ascension or your enlightenment process is for you to see all triggers as an SOS from the beyond inside within you that is vibrating and projecting itself through your consciousness and reflecting back to you in your virtual reality. Okay, this is just science of how this works here you are god but because you are god and you have free will in your story you can choose to not believe or remember that you are you can choose to believe that you are unworthy and therefore you will spend a life where egoic middleman that is running the show acting as your personal assistant is going to make sure that you constantly feel devalued if you have an unworthiness program you're going to feel devalued and it may not be in the beginning in the honeymoon experience but when you let your guard down when you open your heart, when you invest, when you sign the contract, that is when the trigger is going to be projected. And so if you change your story within, they will change their story and how they treat you because they're having free will in their own story that you might be in, that you might not be aware of. You might be acting badly to someone and not know why, because they, you are part of their simulation and they have a script that says, you know, oh, women are bitches or something. And so you have to behave that way. And you're like, why did I act that way? And it is very convoluted and very multidimensional and your linear brain cannot function this, nor does it really need to. But if you can take a step back out of your story and stop getting so butthurt about what is happening, you will realize you are creating even yourself getting ghosted, even yourself getting stolen from, even yourself running out of money and time. So analyze the trigger and how it made you feel, not the story. So I hope that this helps you because if you need help with this, we have some great self-concept teachers and mentors in our group. I personally working with people that are very, very invested to go all the way with themselves. Um, I, I, I 
a rip into it and we expose it, we rip the Band-Aid off, we change the frequency, we change the affirmation, we heal whatever is inside of you that is SOSing this tantrum without it. And so we can get instant manifestation as soon as basically the, the spectrum of your belief system shifts into a more balanced point. Usually we can change a solid vibration of a lifelong pattern in three weeks. So if you're willing to go on that journey, reach out to me. Um, I will put my, um, my, all my, all my information is in the descriptions. Reach out to me personally or join one of our groups, Quantum Revolution on Facebook. Uh, we have a fellowship group if you want to do group coaching. If you are really, really like, I am changing this. I am getting my special person. I am getting my wealth. I am getting my body where I want it to be. You know, you could change anything. Okay, 48 years old, four kids, been overweight my whole life. And just with changing the root program of I'm unworthy and I'm deserving and I'm not good enough and I'm not chosen, fixing those frequencies, I don't have to work out anymore and I have abs. How is that possible when I just, you know, eat pizza and things like that? Because ultimately you are creator and whatever you say is you are the authority over your reality unless you believe that your reality has authority over you. I highly recommend that you take the rest of this year and invest in your vibration, invest in your deprogramming and invest in you. Because again, it is very difficult for you to not see the mirror when you are triggered by circumstances. Because when you're triggered by circumstances, you truly believe that it is happening outside of you to you. And you either have to defend, protect, or run away or fight, fight, flight, free, freeze, fawn, friend, the circumstances, which puts you back to sleep, which puts you back into the pattern, which means you will manifest it again. I highly, 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 highly wish that you would choose you. It's the best decision I've ever made because ultimately we can work on the outside. We can do everything perfect. We can try for success. We can try for love. But ultimately, as soon as you get comfortable in work, in your body, in the situation, as soon as you lose the weight, the pattern will return if you have an unworthy if you have an unworthiness program somewhere at your baseline root, it's going to reflect in your sacral. It's going to reflect in your demonstrations, in your creativity, in who you choose to be in your heart, what you say, what is said back to you, what you see, what you see back to you, what you hear, what you hear back to you, and ultimately what you truly believe about yourself. It's going to manifest everywhere, and you're going to say, what the hell? So choose you, invest in your deprogramming. Get yourself back to your zero point of I am God, I am worthy, and you are the diamond. So what happens to a diamond that's devalued? Nobody wants it, okay? Stop playing that story out. Stop living in that circumstances. Stop being in those I am's. We have a brand new self-concept assessment that you can have. I'll put it right in the link here. You can download it. You can fill it out. You can have your mind blown about what you've actually been believing and acting out in your reality that is causing the sabotage. And then when you are ready to get to work, if you need some help with that blind spot, please reach out to us because that's what we're here to do. Once you've mastered this, it's like, okay, where's the others? We'd like to have this bigger playground here. All right. It's time for us to be the butterflies. We're not the fat chubby caterpillars that are holding on to our safety, starving all the time, worried all the time. And, and, you know, living in a virtual reality where we don't have full control. If you have a warden in your reality, it's you. It's time for you to change that story.